this uh for uh, lack of a better term sucks Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and leave a comment if there's something you think I missed. I can't cover everything in the course of a single video, but letting me know what you guys think I missed or should have covered is always welcome. Without anything else to say, let's dive into the 4060, and discuss the history of some Nvidia cards to see why I think this card is going to be another, for lack of a better term, another disappointment. The first thing I think is important to acknowledge is the overall disappointment, or really if I'm being honest, general community apathy towards the recent RTX 4070, and the earlier 4070 Ti and 4080. Out of all the 40 series cards launched so far, only the 4090 has really enjoyed relative enthusiasm. The elephant in the room causing this complete out of character lack of care, I wouldn't argue is the performance of the cards, but obviously the steep asking price of them. The 4070, which would usually be the model with some of the highest interest, Nvidia has instead more or less kicked a hornet's nest because it's now got a $600 MSRP. I could theorize why they're doing this, but there are so many different reasons they would or even could do this that it would require an immense amount of time to go into detail and fully articulate the reasons why and how. Most prominently though, I think these cards are either just expensive to manufacture, or Nvidia is charging significantly more for the silicon dyes that go into these cards. This will essentially force AIBs, or Nvidia's manufacturing partners, to pay more for the hardware and thus charge more. I understand that at the end of the day these are businesses and they're in it to make money, but if the reviews of the 4070 are anything to go by, then it can't be that much more to manufacture boarding cooler wise because it's physically way smaller than the 4070 Ti's and 4080's. Reviewers also seem to consistently mention that the card feels less premium and has a lower construction quality. To a lot of people this just screams this was supposed to be cheaper than it actually is. Additionally, the actual GPU dies this generation are significantly smaller than they have been historically. The top of the line chips 80102 and GA102 from Ada and Ampere, are physically similar in size, coming in at a bit over 600mm squared. Keep in mind though that GA102 was featured in the 3080, 3080 Ti, 3090, and 3090 Ti. Meanwhile, 80102 has only released in the 4090. The step down GA103 is a 320 bit die around about 500mm squared. Keep in mind though that this chip was primarily on laptops. Meanwhile, the current Gen 80103 is a 379mm squared die with a 256-bit GDDR6X memory controller. While 80103 has significantly more cache than GA103, the amount of silicon that you're actually getting is physically smaller, meaning that it's cheaper to manufacture. While TSMC might be charging Nvidia more for their manufacturing capacity, the smaller size of the die means that they get more GPUs per wafer, making higher return on each wafer. In fact, GPU dies have been so cheap to manufacture for the past generation or two that the GDDR6X was the highest individual component cost going into the entire graphics card. For the Ampere cards, Samsung gave Nvidia such a good deal on their 10 nanometer capacity that they spent engineering resources customizing it, giving us the 8 nanometer process we have today. As a result though, Nvidia was able to keep prices stagnant with a 30 series, and their third party manufacturers weren't charged more per die because they were so inexpensive to manufacture. Move forward to the 40 series, and Nvidia is manufacturing smaller dies on a more expensive lithographic process. If their dies were all still ampere sized, then the prices with ADA would be somewhat understandable from a business perspective, though I still don't think that would have improved sales. Just as another example, the 4070 Ti and 4070 are based on 8104, a 192-bit die coming in at just under 300mm squared. This chip isn't tiny, but when compared to GA104's almost 400mm squared, it's about 75% of the size for over 20% additional money. Imagine if the 4070 came out at $450 while the 4070 Ti came out at the old $600 price. This is how prices should have scaled going into this generation, 
because as I've heard several people describe it, they're giving you less chocolate for more money. To find a die that's comparable in size and memory configuration to the 4070 Ti, you'd have to jump down to Ampere's GA106, which went into the 3060 and 3050. I could continue to go down the lineup and pick apart size and memory characteristics, but I think it's also important to mention that these dies feature significantly more cache and extra cores, so it's not like you're losing performance on average. Speaking of performance, I kinda wanna complain about the 4070 for a second. So looking at the specs of it compared to last gen's 3070, you can see they've both got 5,888 CUDA cores and 184 texture mapping units. Most people only really look at the CUDA core count when comparing GPUs, so from a normal perspective they seem pretty similar. However, the 4070 features only 64 ROPs down from the 3070's 96, which may not seem like a huge deal, but this will hamstring the performance of the card at higher resolutions. The memory bus being cut down to 192 bits, down from 256 bits, will also hurt performance significantly at resolutions higher than 1440p. Even though the memory on the 4070 is technically faster, the amount of potential parallel operations is smaller on it when compared to the 3070. It seems like Nvidia specifically engineered this card strictly for 1440 and 1080p, which kind of sucks. This card will run fine at lower resolutions, but the second you try to turn it up, it's, whoa, you'll need a 4080 for that. Okay, I never ran. All of this I can kind of get over because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, just don't buy it. But what's frustrating is that the high prices on the new cards is keeping the prices of cards everywhere artificially higher than they should be. This also presents a concerning trend, given that leaks are surfacing of the 4060 Ti targeting the $450 price point. This gets me worried about the 4060 and to a lesser extent the 4060 Ti, because while I can understand maybe milking the end of the market that's willing to pay a little bit more, this is curb stomping the ability for new gamers, young gamers, or poor gamers to get into the PC gaming community. From my perspective, it's in my own best interest for these cards to be cheap and accessible not only because I can derive content from it, but because I want them too. This kind of pricing behavior from Nvidia and to a lesser extent AMD literally kills community enthusiasm around not only the products, but gaming as a whole. I can see it in my YouTube analytics as well. Whenever a new card is leaked or announced, buzz is pretty high up until the price is announced and then it's just crickets. I ultimately just want a 4060 to come in at about $329, just like the 3060, even though I know that's wishful thinking. But the overall spec downgrade going from a 106 to a 107 die equivalent combined with the lower cooling and power delivery requirements, has the potential to make this card the least expensive to manufacture from a business or design perspective. I want to hold out hope, but realistically we're probably looking at a high $300 to low $400 car that'll settle around $400 after launch. However, if 4070 sales are anything to go by, we may have hope for Nvidia waking up to what's going on. 4070s are already being discounted or thrown into bundles, so they don't seem to be selling all that well, or else they wouldn't really be doing this. Like I said before, I have hope, but a part of me is slowly killing it as we get closer to the inevitable launch of the 4060 Ti and then the 4060. I hope I'm wrong, but like most others, I'm thinking the 4060 is going to be way too expensive for what you're getting, and so will the 4060 Ti, unfortunately. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. I know this was kind of a negative video, but it's one that I think is important to make because this pricing behavior is literally killing community enthusiasm, and I can see it in my own comments. But that's all I really have to say on the matter, so thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.